Hi guys, welcome to the last game of the Tata Steel tournament, which Aronian has been completely dominating. Uh, in this game he's playing Luke Van Willy, and for the first time, the position's kind of complicated in the opening. Queens are on the board, black is attacking white. Some complications. For the first time, Aronian doesn't have complete and total control of the position. So, my question to you guys is first, what looks like a good move in this position? White to move, think about what you do. And once you're ready, if you're ready now, keep watching because I'm going to explain the move that he played. At this point, Aronian played a good move. What's happening here? Well, first of all, this bishop is in the way of this rook, and it can be improved. And well, basically, the key is this square is weak. The king is weak, clearly. The bishop's in the way of the rook. Um, so we have this nice little maneuvering idea. Bishop to b1. This does two things. Helps to open the d-file for the rook, and number two, helps to allow the move queen c2, which could threaten mate on h7. So bishop b1 is almost certainly the best move for white. It creates a lot of new ideas for white. And if you found this move, kudos. These types of moves are important, kind of just har harmonizing your pieces, I guess you would call it. But bishop b1 is definitely a good move. Uh, after that, black played rook e8. Now note that queen c2 doesn't just win, because black can defend with knight to f6. And after bishop takes, knight takes. This square is covered. However, white does have a pretty pleasant position here. He traded, though. Black traded. Knight e4. Now black just went crazy. Knight to e3. And this is the thing about this tournament. And this is what you, I'm starting to... I'm, I'm speculating against Aronian, about Aronian. He is very good at the simple positions. I think, actually, this is true about Carlson, too. The more complicated the position, the more likely they're going to screw up. If, for example, if you watch the candidates last year, Carlson's last round game to Fiddler, super complex, not the simple, easy positions he likes, and he blundered and lost. Same thing's happening here. This move is just weird, but okay. He took it. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. He took, black took, white took, black took, and I think just something like pawn takes pawn is supposedly very good for, for white. I mean, it's just white's up a pawn. <laughs> and, and if rook takes, we can take on b7. But listen, all the people sitting there with their Houdinis saying that Aronian played bad moves here, it's like five moves to move 40. He doesn't have much time left. Queen b7 is a pretty natural move. Attacking the rook, threatening checks on the back rank. It's hard to argue too much with this move. And the other thing is, if, if, if rook b8, we can go queen b8, followed by queen takes f4. And we just have, you know, a, a very strong position, let's just say. Like, if rook takes f3, pawn takes. Queen takes, queen takes. To expect people to play super accurately in a complex position like this with not much time on the clock, even with time on the clock, it's a little too much. I mean... Even grandmasters who analyze, when they have Houdini at their disposal, they suddenly believe that they're much stronger than that they are. These moves are hard to find. It frustrates me reading analysis, because I'm like, these, these mistakes that the players are making, they're completely normal. They happen to everybody all the time. There's no reason to criticize them overly. I mean, I'm not surprised, in the slightest, that Aronian played this move instead of the more accurate E takes F4, because this looks like a completely awesome move. I mean, black goes, in the game, black goes queen g6. I mean, do you realize what that means? We just took a pawn for free, and black just moved the queen, and somehow this isn't good. I mean, that's hard to understand, especially low on time. The idea, I guess, is knight e3 will not threaten mate on, on g2. Uh, white played rook d8, king h7, queen d5. Uh, this move threatens mate on g8, also happens to be bad. I think the right move was can't remember, I think maybe pawn takes pawn again. It is still the best choice. And white's doing well. But this move, again, this is a mistake, but still a pretty natural one. Um, 
The problem is after rookie six, though, that's not so easy for White to continue. However, if you haven't seen this game before, this is a perfect moment to pause your video, try to find the next move here. I would spend a few minutes on this one, too. All right, so I'm going to show it now. I mean, probably what he planned when he went queen to d5 was simply pawn takes a pawn. Looks like a good move. However, it is not. <laughs> Black uh, hits him with a shocking tactic. And if you didn't see it before, try to look for it now. And, and I'm going to show it to you. Bishop to d4 check. The idea we're interfering with this queen. And after pawn takes bishop, queen to b1. And suddenly, white is lost. If we block with a knight, simply queen takes is strong enough. And definitely cooler. And this is checkmate on the back rank. Um, bishop d4 just wins, and Iranian had to resign here. So his first loss of the tournament came in kind of a surprising fashion. So what does this game tell you? Um, first of all, it tells me that Aronian is more comfortable in kind of solid, stale, like kind of, you know, technical positions. Once things get a little complicated, obviously he's still very strong, but he would like to avoid that, I think, because suddenly he's losing to Luke Van Willey and missing tactics. In his other games with White, he's opposed even in half tactics, pretty much, that could possibly beat him. The positions were that much under control. Um, by the way, instead of E takes F4, we have to do something ridiculous, like Knight one A very difficult move to play, of course. Um, already Black has some advantage here, the attack is pretty strong. But the second thing I learned is like... Yeah, I mean, that's the main thing. I, I think, like, when the position's simple, and he's better, he's very dangerous. Uh, but when when things start to get sharp, you see he has some chinks in his armor here. Uh, you know, anyone's capable of blundering, of course. But it's a, it, you know, it's it's funny. It's like the one complicated game he had the whole tournament. Like literally the only one, and he managed to make uh, a lot of. You know, he managed to blunder the game away to attack it. So something to keep in mind. Probably something that Carlson and his other competitors are, are looking at. Because the first 10 games of this tournament were scary. It's like, oh my god, this guy's unbeatable. But then he gets beat in the last round. The game didn't matter that much. So, like, he already won clear first. I'm sure he wanted to win to, like, get his rating even higher. But still, um, you're, you know, he has to be... I'm sure he was trying pretty hard anyway. Like, he didn't want to lose this game. He wanted to win, have an amazing result, 9 out of 11, which would have kind of, like, shocked the chess world a little bit. It would have also kind of, like, increased the hype uh, if he does get end up playing Carlsen. Although I think if he does, that'll still be a really hyped-up match. Although I still don't see him beating Carlsen. I just don't see it. Because I think Carlsen matches up well with him. He's not going to be able to use his opening prep at all. He's going to have to just outplay him in chess. And I feel like Carlsen's better at this tricky stuff than Aronian. Um, it'll be a great match, though. And, and, you know, Oronian's also a little psyched out by Carlson, I think, ever since the Sinkfield Cup, when Carlson only needed a draw to win the first place and refused to draw from Oronian and beat him. Um, I, I think that was very, very difficult for Oronian to handle. And so, I just don't know. I don't know if he, I don't know if Carlson can take him yet. Or I don't know if Oronian can take Carlson. I just, I have my doubts, my very serious doubts. But we'll see. I'm really looking forward to the candidates. Uh, I think it'll be great to see who, who gets through that tournament. Probably it'll be either Aronian or Kremnik, but there's other good players in there who have a shot too. And that is all. I hope you enjoyed this coverage of Aronian's event. I was very impressed by his play. And I will see you guys later within the next tournament. Probably the uh, Zurich Chess Challenge with a uh, Carlson's playing, Aronian's playing, all the top dogs are playing pretty much. A lot of top guys. Anon, Caruana, Nakamura. So that'll be fun. Thanks all for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.